right, off with these rags. On with something wearable, and then Bert Reynolds, here we come. <laughs> Tina too. Right. Oh, God, what do the cleaners think they're paid for? I'm aware. Oh, Sister Carter, I'm sorry. I thought it was someone else. Mm. I'd like a word with you, Nurse Rutherford, about the state of this room. Yes, what happened to the cleaner? Nothing happened to the cleaner. I told her to leave the room as it was. But take a look at it. It's a bit of a shambles. It's a disgrace. How can I expect the cleaner to clear up in here? You mean we should clean up for the cleaner? You know very well what I mean. The cleaning lady is paid to give each room a sweep around once a week. Not to make your beds, oh, or to pick up your clothes after you. Now, you've had people running around you at home, but here you abide by the same rules as everyone else. Yes, sister. Well, I hope you remember that. I look to you girls who've been here a while to set an example. Pat, Sanchez, I'll Good evening, sister. Evening, Nurse Moran. That was a close one. I nearly said... I oh, know God. what you nearly said. Little cow. Please pay to clean away when I saw her standing there. So nothing but petty rules and regulations. What the hell does it matter how I keep my room? She doesn't have to sleep in it. Oh, well, you know her. She wants to thank her lucky stars when they're all on pot. Well, that settles it as far as I'm concerned. Settles what? I am sick of being treated like an overgrown schoolgirl. You and I are going to find somewhere we can leave our bits unmade and drop our clothes to the point of depravity. You mean a place of our own? But we've talked about it often enough. Now's the time for action. Oh, I don't think we should rush into anything, Pat. Look, are you interested or not? Because I've had the nurses home up to here. Well, of course, if you're frightened, then... All right. Good. That's how we'll spend our weekend, then. Flat hunting! Hmm. It's amazing the number of tool sets for sale. You keep your eye on the accommodation ads. Well, if it's already been let for over a week, why the hell don't you take the card down? It's charming. It's your turn. Uh. There's only this one left. Two girls wanted to share a large flat with others. Well, we might as well find out what the situation is. It's costing us a fortune. It'll be worth it when we find somewhere. Hello? Uh, good morning. I'm ringing on behalf of myself and my friend. We saw a card up about sharing a flat. Could I speak to one of the young ladies concerned, please? What? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, no, it's not quite what we're looking for. Uh, thanks all the same. Well, what's the matter? It was a man. At least three men. The next flat? Yes, fancy. Well, why did you hang up? We couldn't show with three men, Pat. Well, why not? It's safety in numbers. Mammy'd have a fit. It'd depend on the three blokes, wouldn't it? She'd have a fit anyway. Oh, it could be a giggle. No, Pat, there's one thing I couldn't bring myself to do. Well, where do we go from here, then? I'm glad you're suited. Thank you for letting us know. Goodbye. Now, where were we? We weren't. We're looking for a flat. Ah, yes. Names. Patricia Rutherford. Maureen Morahan. Present address. Care of the nurses' home, St. Angela's Hospital. Your nurses? Yes. For our sins. So you'll be wanting somewhere close to the hospital? Mm, not likely, no. Of course we do. Who does? 
It's a matter of convenience. But when I'm off duty, I want to get shot of the place, not a white coat in sight. Well, not too far away. And not too near, either. What size flat are you looking for? Two uh, bedrooms, living room, kitchen, bathroom. Not two bedrooms. But there are two of us, aren't there? We took a whippy share in one. Me? Stuck in with you? And what happens to my love life? What love life? The one I might get a chance to cultivate once we get shot of the carnals. Two bedrooms. Well, that'd be terribly expensive. How much rent do you want to pay? Up to, well, to ten pounds. Twenty? I can't afford anything like that. Well, you pay what you can and I'll cough up the rest. Won't hurt Daddy to fork out a bit more. That wouldn't be right. Oh, don't come the independent bit. Look, it's going to be fair shares or nothing. Mm. Up to ten and no more. We'll be lucky to get a bedsitter for that, won't we? I'm afraid so. Maybe that's what we should be looking for. A bedsit? You've got to be joking. <laughs> Might I suggest you sort things out between you and then come back and see me? Hello? Fix a pad. Can I help you? And another thing. What? Toothpaste. It'd drive me demented seeing you wasted the way you do. Squeezing the tube where the fancy takes you. Nothing to what it would drive me. Watching you roll it up centimetre by centimetre as if the world economy depended on it. We just see things differently. Hmm. It would never have worked out. I don't suppose so. I mean, sharing a flat's practically like being married. Without the perks. And quite frankly, Pat, without wishing to sound rude. You wouldn't marry me if I was the last bloke on earth. Yeah, ditto. It's essential to have the same outlook as the other person. Right. Can you imagine us haggling over the housekeeping? I can. I mean, it's one thing knocking around with someone in the nurse's home. It's quite another actually sharing a place with them. Yes. Let's face it, the only thing we ever really had in common was that we were new together. Well, we're not anymore. We're self-sufficient now. Entirely. So that's it then. We go our separate ways, agreed? Agreed. Come on, you. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Didn't expect to find you here. No? Well, not in a free weekend. It's the canteen tea. Draws me like a magnet. Where's Maureen? How should I know I'm not Maureen's keeper? Well, I'm sorry. You're usually together, that's all. Not anymore. Oh, you haven't had a row? Well, let's say we've reached the parting of the ways. What, you and Maureen? Ah, no, don't keep on. Oh, Pat, I'm really sorry to hear that. Why not get out your violin? Do you know something? I've always envied you two. Yeah? Having each other to go around with. You were like that from the first day, weren't you? Grim necessity. To begin with, maybe. But then Donny Gittings and I clung to each other the first few weeks, too. But that didn't last. Well, not like you and Maureen. Just got to be a habit, that's all. Her being in the next room. You're not the type that puts up with someone out of habit. No. You and Maureen, well, you kind of complement each other. Like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> no, seriously, Pat. You go well together. We couldn't be more different. Well, that's why.
What sort of day did you have? Oh, deadly. Me too. <laughs> Pat, about the flat. I've been thinking. So have I. And I reckon I'd be prepared to slam it a bit. You would. <laughs> but I'm not sharing a bedroom with you. Well, I could maybe have a divan in the living room or something. And I do see your point about not being too near the hospital. Yeah, I didn't mean the other side of London. I'm sure we'll be able to work out something to satisfy us both. Okay, so we start looking again. <laughs> right. But when? Oh, crowns, where did the weekend go? <laughs>